Protecting your frame against knocks and scrapes is a really good idea, especially if you have a new bike or a bike that is fairly new and the paintwork is still intact. Now there's various different ways you can approach this. You can get entire kits to cover every part of the frame. You can also get the bare minimum and a bare minimum might be some chainstay protection or even going a bit ghetto and using old inner tubes, a bit of recycling there for you. But in this video today, I'm gonna to fit some frame protection decals and I'm gonna show you the best places to fit them and the best way to fit them in order to keep your bike looking fresh. Now, firstly, you're gonna to need to get the right sort of protection gear for your bike. Now, there's a lot of different options available on the market and a lot of different ways you can do this. Now, firstly, there are some pre-made things you can buy, i.e. this has a chainstay protector on it that is designed for that purpose. You can also get crank boots, little rubber caps that go over the end of your crank arms, which protect them from paint scratches when you do inevitably strike against rocks and other things on the ground. However, I'm gonna do a bit of a DIY kit today using two particular things. I have an AMS frame protection kit here. Uh, in fact, I've actually got a part used one as well, so I'm gonna use this first in all the main areas on the bike. And then, of course, I'm gonna use some of my trusty Scotch M228, which is just rubber, effectively. It's sticky rubber. And I'm gonna show you a few cool tricks you can do to silence your bike and, of course, keep it free, hopefully, of paint chips. Now, preparation. This is absolutely key for the adhesive to work correctly on your bike and for it to stay in place and, more importantly, look good as well. If you don't get this stage right, you could suffer air bubbles or even worse, it could start peeling up at the edges, which is kind of pointless at being there in the first place. Now, to clean your bike, isopropyl alcohol is the best thing for this purpose. It makes sure that any greasy residues, any other adhesive that might be there can be stripped away and it won't damage any part of your bike. And this is ideal. Now you can find isopropyl alcohol in certain cleaners and products like contact cleaner, that is essentially pure isopropyl alcohol, so I'm gonna use that. You can also use brake cleaner. Essentially anything that has isopropyl alcohol and will evaporate afterwards, that is your friend. Try and avoid any household cleaners that you think might be good, because a lot of them tend to have silicon in there. And silicon is awful against adhesive, and sooner or later, your adhesive decals will peel off. So on this particular bike, there's quite a few special areas I want to be applying stuff. So the first one is the top tube. Now you might wonder why I'm going to put it on top tube when rocks and stuff ping up on other parts of the bike, but actually on a nice paint job like this, it's got a nice glossy finish on there. Your jeans or your knee pads or even just your legs and day-to-day -day use will actually rub the finish away on your top tube. And because this is like a free ride hardtail, I'm probably going to use this for jumps and a bit of messing around and quite likely to use knee pads. And I'm also quite likely to sit on the top tube sometime just when I'm maybe chatting to Blake at the side of the trail or something like that. Now it all has an effect on the paintwork. So I'm going to protect the top tube on my bike and I'm going to show you exactly where the best part of that is to do. Now you might notice here that the kit I'm using has actually got some uh, sort of like chevron style patterns to it. Now what I want to do, because I want the GMBN on this one to just sit past here on the top tube because that is the most important bit of the top tube and I don't want to mess around with this graphic here by covering it up. So I'm actually going to make a little mark here and trim this so it sits and follows the line of the graphic on the top tube there. This is where you can get quite picky with your own designs and make sure they fit nice and flush. So it's all about lining up the center of the decal and following it along the top tube there till it's in the right place. Now just make a line along the center of it as you go. I'm going to keep this in place here, just to make sure it stays nice and straight. Now as you'll notice, this has a slight honeycomb construction to it. Now the honeycomb actually makes it a lot tougher and actually fairly resistant to bashes. A little bit different to the heli tape. And I'm just going to continue wrapping this around, get that nice and smooth. Looks pretty good. Next up is around the head tube of the bike. Now, again, there's no additional protection on here against cable rub. I, when you turn the handlebars through the motions, those control cables tend to rub against the paintwork. They dull it down, and even worse, in time, they completely rub it raw back to the bare metal. Now, okay, this isn't really the end of the world, but it's not gonna look very nice, and I want this frame to stay looking good as long as possible. So I actually want quite a large piece on here, because there's a chance of the cable rubbing 
throughout here. So I'm actually gonna put one of these nice long sections on. And again, make sure the middle gets on there nice and firmly. Smooth that on. And then work it to the edges there. And that will work a treat, I think there. That's good. I've got a lower my dropper post position, which brings that cable down slightly. And there's actually a bit of cable to pull through once I lower the post in the frame. It's in the work stand at the moment. That's why the cable is this tight. The next place is part of the down tube. Now, this does depend on where you ride and a few other factors. So just for example, if you've got a pickup truck and you hang your bike over the back of the pickup truck, I would advise using a decent amount towards the top because that is where your bike hooks over the, the pickup pad on the back of the truck there. So that's worth taking into account. Now, perhaps you live somewhere that's extremely rocky and rough like the Alps or anywhere with lots of loose rock, in which case you're gonna get bits of rock flying up all over the down tube here. Now locally and most of the areas I ride, I don't really have that as an issue, but the typical areas that rocks and things do tend to fly is lower on the tube and around the bottom bracket shell. So I am gonna pay a little bit of attention to the bottom part of the down tube here. Same rules that apply as the rest of the bike. Do the center first, and then work it to the sides there. Now, if you're using rolls or heli tape or anything, you can cover the entire down tube if you like. I don't like to do that personally. I like to just cover the areas that are more likely to get a bit of paint damage to them. I'm also gonna put a bit of rubber on the BB shell itself because I know from experience, I've had some really, really big chips on the underneath the bottom bracket shell because you don't ever really see it. Now, one extra little top tip. I know there's a lot of you out there that will never do this. On the underneath of your frame here, on the bottom bracket shell, you'll see a number stamped into the bike. That number is completely exclusive to your bike. That can identify your bike if the bike is stolen. That's a really good thing for your insurance to have. Note this down, especially if you're gonna cover it up, it's out of the way, and it also means that if your bike is unfortunate enough to get stolen, it can later be identified if it's found. So a good thing to know, just note that down. Next up is your crank arms. Now this is a personal preference thing. I'm not normally that fussed about this but some people like to protect their crank arms. You can get specific decals to go on your crank arms so you don't rub away the paintwork on them. But something that does bug me is the ends of the crank arms. Now you can buy dedicated boots that slide over the end of them. And essentially when you're pedaling through rough stuff, you're gonna ground out your pedals and your crank arms. Now it's less of an issue with alloy cranks, but if you've got carbon cranks, you definitely wanna try and protect the ends of your cranks. Well, I'm gonna show you a little trick to make your own little version that does a great job of protecting them. Same principle as with applying anything on the rest of the bike. Just try and mirror those surfaces and get a good adhesion. Now, that is fairly invisible when you're actually riding. And yeah, okay, it might come off in the future with extended use in bad weather, but it's a very small thing and very easy to protect. Next up is the back end of the bike. Now this will depend on your riding style, how wide the back end of the bike is, the design of the frame. Now on my particular frame, the back end here is quite wide. Now I am aware that sometimes when moving around, riding flat pedals especially, I rub my ankles on the chainstay slightly. So although this one has a pad on here, I'm actually gonna remove that because I don't like these sort of pads. We'll get to that when we do it, but I'm gonna put some on the side of the chainstays in the area where my feet might rub. I'm gonna do that on both the non-drive side and the drive side. And again, go for that central line. Now that is gonna do the business there for stopping any paint rub. It's quite tough as well. I'm also gonna have a strip along the top here. Now I'm just gonna leave this going underneath because the rubber will actually keep that in place. The rubber itself comes in strips like this, comes in 50 mil and 25 mil wide. Um, the one I've got here is 50 mil wide, so I'm actually gonna have to cut this to fit. Now the really good thing about this stuff is it's stretchy and it's extremely adhesive. So you can actually shape it slightly all the way along to get a really good finish. And because it's quite thick, it dampens out the sort of noise that you get from the chain just ticking away on the chain stay. And again, depending on how much you have, you can really go to town on it. You could put some on the top of the back of the seat tube there. Sometimes you get rocks and stuff 
flick round as you're riding and that can remove some paint. And again, the sides of your fork legs, that's a really popular place for people to do that. And it's a really good place to put some. Okay, so that's the basics in fitting frame protection to your bike and certainly some notable areas there like that top tube rub, the head tube for the cables under the bottom bracket, all that sort of stuff. Now, if you like the look of these AMS kits we have with our GMBN logos on, you can get those on our store. And I'm also giving away five sets. So you could win one of five sets. The competition link is in the description below. So head down there if you're interested. And the competition is live from now until the 4th of April. So if it's after the 4th of April, you cannot qualify to win, unfortunately. But you can still buy them in our store. Good luck. And click up here if you want to see a video about the Topic Tube Booster. It's a tubeless inflation system with a little hidden trick up its sleeve. And click down here if you want to learn about installing a dropper post on your bike. That's part of our essential series, and you'll be able to click through to the rest of the videos in that series. If you like what we do here at GMBN Tech, give us a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to share and subscribe.